Greetings everyone! Welcome back to the next phase in the Model 3's journey. Tonight we have a few gifts for the Model 3. It's kind of like Christmas for this thing around here because I've got myself some 4116 RAM that I acquired from Jamico, I'm pretty sure. They indicate that it's working, tested, refurbished, whatever. I bought extra in case we need it and I'm pretty sure the Model 1 also takes the same RAM so that'll give me some some stock to pull from if I need to do some work on that. And in anticipation of upgrading from 16 to 48K, I got one of Jay Newworth's 48K RAM badges here, which uh, I know I've done the comparison on the Model 4 nameplate, but very ex very good, excellent reproduction. Excited to have that there. Obviously, I'm going to hold on to the factory badge. Finally, it won't be going on tonight um, because I know when I first got this, I said I probably wouldn't repaint the case, but I'm now rethinking that decision. I, I got a case badge from Jay, and again, I mean, look at that. Just excellent. Um, but I don't want to put that on there tonight because I'm actually thinking of repainting the case. I came across a really good guide that goes into detail about how to sand, prime, and paint the cases for these machines. Um, Patrick from Texas Tandy Res Restorations has a great uh, PDF on his site, and I've been reading through that. So I read it a couple more times. I might get enough confidence when the weather's consistently warm to go try this out. We'll see if I actually do it or not, but if I do, I don't want to have to stick and try to peel the badge off. I'd rather have it be permanent. And this one here, I actually did manage to shine up a bit. And you probably can't see it on the camera, but there's some cracking in there um, and stuff that was kind of evident on it when I got it. And so what I did with it was I actually gave it a little bath in acetone to cloud it up and then uh, sprayed it over with some clear coat um, that actually worked really, really well. And it doesn't seem to be cracking or anything. I've read online people have tried nail polish, but nail polish cracks and any flexing. This clear coat's got a little bit of flex to it, so um, I did three or four coats on that, and that really shined it up and got me through. So until I get to the point of either repainting the case or deciding I'm not going to and applying this one, that's where we are. So what I'm going to do is um, spin this around, pull it apart, and we're going to take a look at where the RAM is going, insert it, and then once the RAM is installed, I'm going to run a memory test on it. So let's get started with the disassembly. Let's get this flipped up um, and we'll take a look. All right, I'm gonna flip this down holding onto these screws so they can fall into my hands and I don't lose them. There's one. Okay, one did not come out, so I'm just gonna have to give it a little finagle. All right, I didn't remove the back screw because it's already removed. Um, I didn't line this quite right when I put it back together last time, so I left the screw out. So figuring it wasn't worth taking it apart again to try and line it up when I was going to take it apart anyway, I didn't do it. All right, now to get this off without wrecking the CRT. All right, the machine's still plugged in so I can ground myself. This is where I wasn't lined up, so I just have to make sure I get this lined up. Um, so these are the sockets here, and uh, we've already got our first 16K of RAM, so eight 4116s. These are uh, Tandy stamped with a Tandy hourglass course. They are factory, and uh, I have my additional RAM here. So I'm going to get 16 of these chips out, and we're going to put them right in. All right, I think that's it. I think we got these in. Um, I, as you can see, the very last one I misaligned, so I caught that during the visual inspection. All right, looking at the technical notes and jumpers, the only jumper settings that apply to this machine are if you're working with a 4K model versus a, a model using 16K DRAMs. I suspect that's because if you put 4K DRAMs in it, you've got four by one chips in there instead of these, obviously, 16 by one. The only other settings are uh, timings for the video signal, the video sync, horizontal and vertical. Um, and then if you have an FDC board, there's an additional, so there's one megahertz clock and some other stuff, some pre-comp. 
uh, but none of that's going to apply to this machine. There is no disc controller. So, with that in mind, I'm going to bring the, the top of the cabinet back up. We are going to power the machine up and see how much RAM it counts. Okay, first things first, let's see if it powers up. Obviously it should, not much happened here. Alright, now, the first indicator here will be if I hit enter the second time after the memory size prompt, it will take longer for the Model 3 basic prompt to appear. And it is. Okay, that's good. So, M-E-M, -E 48082. I believe that's the correct number. All right, so at least from basics byte-by-byte -byte memory test, it looks like we now have a 48K Model 3. So, I'm going to power this off, and before we do anything else, I have extra DRAMs in case any are bad, we're going to replace the RAM badge. Alright, we are all nice and dry, so I've got the backing off of this. And I'm just going to center it in there and press it. Oh, look at that. And it fits right in the groove. Now, these don't stick up as much as the original bubble, of course, because this is a different design, but it looks excellent. 48K RAM. So our next step is I'm actually going to connect my Tris I.O. And we're going to power this up and boot into LDOS. And I'm pretty sure I've got a Model 3 memory test program floating around there that I'm going to use. And you might ask, how are you going to get that thing to boot from the FRED, considering you don't have the FRED boot ROM? Well, just stick around and you'll see. All right, the FRED is connected, running to the Model 3 expansion connector back here. Might even see it through the motherboard there. So now I'm going to boot this thing up with the FRED without the boot ROM or disk drives. All right, time to power it up. Uh, you may have noticed the screws have magically reappeared without it showing up in the video. I figured you've seen enough screwing for one evening, so Let's get to powering this up, and we're going to boot this from the FRED indirectly. Alright, got that longer pause, question ma'am, 48082, love it. Okay, so we're going to boot from the FRED. We're going to say poke. Okay, 116.912.56, out 236.56. Seven, kind of model 3. That uh, tells it that it's Model 3. If you have a Model 1, use 1. If you have a 4, that's not a 4P, like a Gatorade 4, 4D, non-Gatorade. That's a 4. 4P is a 5, just so you know. Okay, read from the Fred. If it's not 254, bail. And finally, read 255 bytes. Oh, I gotta fix that. I made a typo. Okay, so read 255 bytes from the FRED and start them, put them in memory starting at address 20480. Next, let's run this. And this essentially downloads the code from FRED.ROM, which on the Tris IO is on a network share, but either way, from the network card, share, or SD card. And we'll just run this 20480 go. I should get the Fred menu if I did it right, and I did. LLS M3, all right, let's go. Okay, so I'm going to disable uh, drives four, five, six, and seven because they're not here and it's gonna get wonky if I don't. Look at that. Look at that. So now we have just the hard drives to find. This is a disk image that I use on my machines with floppy drives and floppy controllers, so that's why we're doing this. All right, so I've taken the files from the Model 3 diskette, the diagnostics diskette, I should say, and I have put it onto the Tris IO's network share. So if I do a VHT UTL EIR, I should get, oh yeah, there are my files, and those are actually in a network share. This is the beauty of the Tris IO. Um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull in dmt.cmd, which is the memory test that I intend to run. So this is going to be uh, dmt. 
cmd, all right. Make sure I got that right. cmt slash cmd. It probably drops it on drive zero, but that's okay. Okay, here we go. So now if I actually see DMT on there. DMT CMD. All right, let's see if it runs. It does. All right, and this just kind of runs, and it starts from basically the bottom of RAM. And the great thing about this is, as you can see by this text here, program location map, I'll turn this down a bit. Um, this program is relocating itself throughout the entirety of RAM and kind of running from there. So. This is a slightly more comprehensive and different test than the basic byte-by-byte -byte memory test. And this will pull a little good exercise of memory. So I'm going to let this run for a little while. And we'll come back and see how it's progressing. If it works out OK after a bunch of tap passes, I'm going to be happy enough to put the cover back on. And I'll be able to dig around for some other memory tests. But I figure this is a pretty good thing. It's running. Um, this is actually giving me a little bit of exercise of all these memory addresses. So I'm very happy so far with the result. Let's see how it goes. All right, we've just completed 51 passes, and uh, it works. So I'm going to reassemble this, call this memory upgrade a success, and uh, I don't have an EEPROM to burn uh, the CROM, so I'm going to have to get myself or an EEPROM so I can burn that, and then it'll have the FredROM in it all the time. And the great thing about that is I don't have to leave the Tris I.O. connected to it all the time. I can just uh, connect it when I want to, and when it's not detected, it'll just dump back to the standard boot routine, which will just pull up the cassette prompt. We are reassembled and ready to go. Trisio connected, program entered. Let's run it and download the program. And let's run the downloaded ROM. Should give me the Fred menu. It did. And let's just for the sake of it look at. So let's go to LDOS again. I'm going to have to take a copy of this SD card and for this machine and just use that rather than uh, having to disable this. I don't want to have to go back and forth on this, so I'll keep a copy for disk systems and a copy for not. But anyway, there we are. Let's see what we got in the live command. Oh, we have a memory command. Very cool. Setcom's not going to do anything. There's nothing there. There's your date in the system. There is time in the system. There is. Oh, this is very good. Let's see what we have in CMD files around here. I don't know if we have much on this. There's DMT that I was playing with before. The TED editor, uh, import, export, VHD2, or VHD util, I mean, F update for the firmware, and nothing on the other two drives in this particular SD card image. So that is actually really freaking good. This machine is actually running. We have uh, Disk Basic, which is interesting. It's really kind of surreal working with an operating system like this on a diskless machine. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I mean, really, that's the Model 3 RAM upgrade. It went swimmingly, unlike most of my projects, or at least some. It uh, has the new spiffy 48K RAM badge on it. Thank you, uh, Jay, for selling me that. Uh, Jay Newarth, if you need repro badges, um, I highly recommend Jays, and again, just because it's not on there, but that's the, the one he made for the main nameplate, which if I do paint this, will go on there after I paint it. If I don't, it'll probably just go on there. And yeah, so that's the plan. The only a thing remaining for this machine is a Fred ROM, so I don't have to type in that basic program or load it from cassette every time I want to start it up and use uh, games or whatever happens to be an LDOS on it. But and maybe a serial card uh, down the road. I have a couple of floating around that don't actually work right. So if I can get those diagnosed and fixed, perhaps one of those will go in this machine as well. And it would make a neat terminal. And I don't have plans to put a disk controller card in or do the floppy drives or anything. 
Um, one more note, uh, the, when I did have the badge off, there are no screws behind this, and looking at the, the inside of the case, this bezel is all weld, plastic welded in. So if I do paint it, I'm going to have to get good with painter's tape, because there's no way this is coming out. You don't want to break the welds. So anyway, that's it. That's the Model 3 48K upgrade. So thank you for watching, and until next time, stay classy.